Hey everyone, Mr. Mo here. Welcome to the first episode of Channel 2. Now, uh, it's written as Channel 2.0 because it's, it's, uh, we're really alluding to the fact that it's an evolution or the second version of something that I used to watch when I was a kid called Channel 1 News. So, okay, so Channel 2 is our STEM news show. So in Channel 2, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, what I'll do is I'll co collect and gather all of the stories, news items that I feel are important and maybe that you should know about. Uh, there's some fun items in there as well. And then hopefully over the course of uh, several months, as you watch Channel 2 News, you start to get a better understanding of the technology landscape, and that helps to fuel your your passion for wanting to go into a STEM field or a STEM career of some sort, okay? So definitely uh, be on the lookout for Channel 2 uh, episodes as we release them, because uh, they're going to be uh, very fun and, and have uh, an opportunity for you, again, to keep up with the latest news in technology, engineering, mathematics, and science, okay? So let's get into our first story. So the first story I wanted to talk about was the release of Tesla's Cybertruck. Now this has kind of been in the works for, for a couple years now, but nobody knew what the Cybertruck looked like, okay? And so if you see here on the screen, this is what the Cybertruck will actually look like when they release it, I believe in 20, late 2020, or maybe in 2021. But when I first saw this, when Elon Musk came out on the stage, I thought it was a joke. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was a joke. And so just because the shape was so outrageous, right? Never seen anything like this in real life, especially if you're talking about actually producing it. And so when I saw it, I was like, nah, this can't be real. This has to be a joke. But apparently it's not. OK, and so as you can see here, now that I'm looking at it, now that I've had an opportunity to really get used to it, I, I actually think it's pretty cool. So um, and you'll definitely stand out if you're riding down the street in a cyber truck. Right. And I think that's kind of what they were going for. So let's take a look. This is what it looks like directly from the side here. And you see these sharp angles. That's what makes it gives it its unique look. The other thing that's unique about it is the the body. The body is actually some sort of a stainless steel alloy, which um, and it's not painted, so um, it's just plain stainless steel. And I heard that they're going to have a matte black version, which will probably be very popular as well. Um, we'll scroll down here. You can see the unibody construction. Unibody meaning single body construction, um, and then this this unique. A headlight set up here, which looks like a, a long strip LED strip. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, here's some concept images of what you can do the interior, and you can see the front here. You have this uh, marble looking uh, front dashboard. So let's scroll down. Here's some video of the truck driving on a test track somewhere. Looks pretty cool. And here are the specs or specifications, all right? So some of the technical specifications, length, width, towing capacity, things like that, okay? And it will have autopilot. Autopilot is their autonomous driving system. Um, and you can order it now. So I think you have to put down $1,000 for a pre-order and that pretty much puts you in the queue for uh, when they actually start producing these, okay? So that's the Tesla Cybertruck. Um, I thought it was pretty cool after I got used to the weird design. So um, definitely let me know in the comments what you think of the Cybertruck, uh, if it's something that you would buy if you had the opportunity, because um, it's pretty cool. So next story, um, you know, at Oasis, we do and teach a lot about drones, okay? Because drone technology is gonna be very important as we move into the future in many industries. So agriculture, uh, energy, uh, utilities, right? Um, and then also in uh, drone racing for entertainment, okay? So I'm a big fan of DRL, which is the Drone Racing League. But as it exists today in the Drone Racing League, it's only human pilots, right? But they're developing uh, AI pilots, so artificial intelligence pilots, right? So robots that can fly themselves and compete against human drone pilots. And so as you can see here, they actually had a competition to design uh, a, an AI piloted drone. And here you can see it kind of going through some of the obstacles here. Um, and here's the drone right here. It looks more like an airplane um, rather than a standard quadcopter. Um, 
And as we scroll down here, you can see the design from on top here. So it looks like it looks like there's still four propellers, one here in the front, two on the sides, and then one in the rear here. Uh, and then of course it uses sensors to to detect uh, probably a lot of vision, um, some vision uh, controls there to detect obstacles. Um, let's see. So that's pretty cool. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, the article goes on to say that the AI pilots couldn't really compete with the human pilots, not yet, because of just the speed of being able to recognize obstacles and get through uh, gates, they call them drone gates. Um, they, they aren't up to the task as of yet, but because uh, AI is able to learn very quickly, I'm sure in a matter of uh, another year or so, they'll be able to at least get on the same level as a uh, as a uh, human pilot, so that was that was pretty cool. So, next story um, is about uh, a startup company called Play Versus. Now, I don't know if it's pronounced Play Versus or Play VS, um, but I wanted to talk about this because I thought it was very important to highlight an African American entrepreneur in the tech space. He's actually raised, uh, I believe, ninety six million dollars just in this past year for his startup, PlayVS, okay? So what's cool about this startup is that it's a eSports startup. So a lot of you are, are into Fortnite and maybe League of Legends uh, and eSports in general or playing on your computers, right? Um, so they're building, PlayVS is building a platform that allows high schools across the country to actually compete against each other on this platform, okay? And so, um, you know, as any part of building a business, you have to raise money or have money so that you can build out, pay salaries, uh, buy equipment and things that you need. And so PlayVS has raised in just this single year uh, close to $100 million uh, to help build out their platform, PlayVS. Um, so they have some famous investors such as Nas, I believe. Diddy is an investor. Um, and maybe Will Smith, I think I saw his name thrown around. So, uh, but just a very point, a point of inspiration because uh, from what I understand, Delane, who's the CEO, founder, this gentleman right here, he's an entrepreneur from Detroit, grew up in inner city of Detroit, didn't have much, but, uh, you know, very passionate about entrepreneurship. I know he moved out to California years ago and was able to over these uh, several years to, to raise money for his startup and get it started. So. Again, just a point of inspiration. If you have an idea and you want to build it, you just need the passion to go out and do it. Okay, so that's the lane of Play BS. And then finally, um, I thought this was a pretty cool story for Christmas time. Um, there's a father and and son in Colorado, I believe, who were designing and building a 3D printed Lamborghini. Okay, so it's, it is exactly what you think it is. They were 3D printing parts and pieces to develop and, and produce their own Lamborghini Aventador, okay? So um, so that meant that they had to use their CAD program, uh, find uh, a scaled down version or scaled up version of it and print each piece um, individually and then put it onto, I think they had a chassis and a motor. It wasn't a Lamborghini motor, but it was just supposed to look like um, a Lamborghini. And the cool thing about this and why I thought it was cool for Christmas is uh, the actual company Lamborghini found out about what they were doing. And instead of getting mad about them producing a replica Lamborghini, they actually uh, surprised the young man, the son, uh, with the Lamborghini and his father uh, on Christmas Day. So there's a, and I'll link uh, to a, a video that Lamborghini actually did. So here's the real Lamborghini Aventador here that they were able to actually borrow for a few weeks and drive around. So that's a pretty cool story for Christmas, a wonderful Christmas surprise. Um, but the bigger, bigger thought I had about that was that this idea of being able to work on a project, something that uses technology, uses innovation, uses imagination and build something that you want, right? That was one of the things that really inspired me as a child. I wanted to be able to make the things that I couldn't have, right? Uh, I was a big fan of Transformers. And so I really Wanted, uh, I really got into robotics when I was young. And I think as a child, you really need those points of inspiration to drive you to do these things. And so I, uh, there's a lot of technology and a lot of innovation in this story. We're talking about 3D printing, 
Uh, they're using their hands. They're working together, building in this garage. And so I thought it was a great story. So, um, so hopefully that inspired you, uh, as you, it will inspire you as you move into 2020. Think about some projects maybe that you want to do with your parents or somebody, one of your loved ones. Um, but that you can also share on Club Oasis. So that'd be great. So that's it for today's episode of Channel 2. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you got a feel for some of the st- types of stories that we're going to talk about. But again, just a good way for you to get a good uh, view of the landscape of technology, entrepreneurship, um, and STEM in general. Uh, these are the types of stories that we want to share with you and the members of Club Oasis. So I'll see you in the next episode.